So in this video I'm going to try to make a rocket stove out of a coffee can and some soup cans. Um, so basically what a rocket stove is, is it's kind of a, a portable camp slash emergency stove made out of just readily available materials. There's other types of rocket stoves. There's ones that are much bigger and I think they're like reburning stoves. But then anyways in this case this is like a little mini uh, emergency stove kind of cool just want to attempt it and the nice thing about these stoves is they just burn um, twigs or wood so stuff laying around so you don't need propane or napa napa fuel or anything like that okay so let's get started so what do I have here I have a coffee can two medium-sized cans that were used for I think uh, like alfagetti or uh, uh, spaghettio stuff like that so a little bit larger than a soup can and then I have a soup can all right, let's get started and uh, do some cutting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out the bottom here and have a, the opening specifically for the soup can. I'm just doing this roughly. So now I'm going to drill out all the way around and then, or use just a Dremel to cut this out. It makes this project I think would be a lot easier with a Dremel, but you probably could get away with a pair of tin snips because we got to do some cutting up around there later. But I'm just going to drill all the way around so that way it makes it easy to cut out with a Dremel. So I'm just going to do that real quick. So you, I got the holes drilled. So using a Dremel is going to make this a whole lot easier, but if you had to, you could just drill a little closer, maybe if you could score it a little bit, and so the drill bit doesn't slide around, and then you could just uh, cut it out with something like a, a pair of um, um, pliers like this, or I should say cutters, oh, kind of like that. But using a Dremel is just so much more, well, easy, <laughs> so I'm going to use one. But if you don't have one, you don't have to have it. Alright, I'm just going to take a couple minutes and clean that up. Alright, got this hole nice and cleaned up. Careful, nice sharp edges. Soup can. Fits in nicely. So, I'm going to cut out the bottom of the soup can. Going to now, in one of the other in the other can, in the larger can, I'm going to put this guy in kind of like that. So the way it's going to sit inside this bigger, bigger uh, tin can, it'll be like that. So it'll sit like that. So this will be on the inside, and this be like that. So it'll look like that on the outside, and on the inside, it'll look like that except for it would be kind of like this. So, next is, I'm going to trace out It's not the best, but I'll, uh, I'll work with it. Yeah, that should work. Alright, so I'm going to drill or dremel this out. So you're going to cut this out as well.
Okay, I got this cleaned up. The bottom cut out of the soup can. So the soup can goes into the larger can like that. So what will end up happening is this goes inside like that. Like that. And then this can goes in like that. And then into the smaller can. Like that. Now it's angled down a little bit. I gotta just clean that up a bit. But that's kind of the kind of how it works. And then this other can will go on top of here. So I'm gonna have to cut around so it's a little bit below. And then I'm gonna insulate the inside of it. Okay. So I took this can, I cut this, the other one for the center part, one of the, the mid-sized can, cut it in half, or up to the point where it's going to be slightly below this, because this is going to get filled with some type of insulating material. And then I'm going to take the Dremel and I'm going to Dremel out, or you can use tin snips and cut out a couple tabs and bend them down using this lid. I'm going to cut a hole out in here in the center for the exhaust, for the chimney, and it's going to fit down in like that to hold the insulation material down um, so it doesn't spill out. And then just fold these down, that'll hold this lid down. Nice and simple, and what that'll do is it'll provide a bit of a lip here. What it'll provide here is this will be raised relative to the exhaust and I'll put a grate or something or you could put your pot directly over this if your pot is wide enough or your pan if not if you're using something smaller I'm gonna you, you know you can use some type of mesh or something to to put across like that and then put your pot on it so alright so next I'm just gonna cut these out get that ready and then I'm gonna mix up some material for insulation and uh, that should pretty much do it. Alright, so I got the lid cut, lid or cap I should say, it's right like that, cans like, the stove's like that, so I'll try to center it, and then that'll just fit right on top like that, and then this will just line up once I get this all filled. So next I'm going to tape this up with some metal tape. This isn't really fireproof, but what it'll do is it'll hold it in place while I pour the refractory, or I should say insulation that I'm using. I'm using a mixture of sand, plaster of Paris, and some perlite. Um, just to keep the weight down. That's just just an experiment. You can use any type of insulating material you like. Um, I've seen people use ash. I've seen some people use sand, pebbles, rocks. So whatever you want, whatever you have available. Um, it's pretty rudimentary, but I'm just going to use that because uh, I think it'll insulate well. And I have some left over from a uh, forge I made. So. I'm going to give that a try, and the perlite should keep the weight down on this. So that's the, the middle part, the inside, what we would call the chimney.
There we go. Now I'm going to put it in. So again, the way this goes, this can goes in like that. And then goes on the inside. So it sits in right like that. side of it looks like. Pretty simple. Okay, I'm going to get the the insulating material ready and then we'll pour it, let it set, and we'll test fire it. And we'll also cut out a grate for the top um, and then a little little thing for inside the, the fire chamber here. Uh, the combustion chamber just so that it's the fuel is raised off of the bottom a little bit so air can get underneath um, okay let's do that next alright so now I have some plaster of Paris some sand and some perlite came in this big bag takes up all kinds of room Okay, I decided to go find a bucket and mix it in here because it just uh, it was too hard to mix in two containers. Now I can get a proper mix. So now I'm going to add the water and then I'm going to pour it in to the container. So I just taped up the front here just so nothing would come out. Just there was a little gap here. Now I'm going to pour it in. Would have thought I ran just a little short. Alright, so I mixed up another batch. This stuff hasn't quite set yet, but it sets pretty quick, so you, you, you gotta work quick. lid. Oh, it fits in beautifully. Wait for that to set. Be good. So I'm still just waiting for this to set up. 
But what I'm going to do is just bend down these tabs that I cut earlier. Just to hold this in place. And now, what I'll be able to do is put a grate over that. So this is expanded mesh, or expanded steels, and this will be the top cooking grate. Alright, cut the size. So basically, that sits on top there. So that way, if you have a pot, so that way, so now we have the grate here on top. Because if you have a pot that will fit and rest on this, that's great. But if it doesn't, you need something like this. So you could just use some mesh of some sort, some steel rods, whatever your imagination can think up. So, so like say this pot can be like that. So, it's a yogurt container, but imagine that it is a pot. All right, I'm gonna let this set a bit more, and then uh, we'll fire it up. I also need something in here to raise the fuel up just above so that some air can get underneath. All right, I found something, just a piece of metal. Ideally, you could just use another tin can just cut it, cut it out, flatten it, and then that can be where your fuel can sit. So now we have a spot where the fuel can sit with the grate for the pot. So now basically what will happen is your fuel goes in like that. And then you put some fuel down there. And then when you start the fire and it starts burning, it creates a draft. And then cold air comes in. The hot air is coming out of here and uh, it's supposed to pretty much self-feed. You don't need a fan or anything. So, okay, let's go give it a try. I'm gonna cut up some wood here, some little uh, kindling, some sticks, and feed it and light it up. So I got some wood here, all cut up. I'm gonna use some paper in there to get it going first. When it loose, oxygen is just as important as fuel. Boy, that gets going quick. caught that stuff that I put down the chimney on so a pot of water let's see uh, I got a cup of water in this let's see um, if I can get this to boil
That's burning real nice now. Oh, my water's starting to boil. That was pretty quick. Here's a look down the combustion chamber, burning away nicely. Probably need to add a little more fuel now. Alright, we got a rolling boil going. Got a nice draw going. Nice flame action, it's not too smoky. It's boiling away very nicely. So there we go, successful. Works very well. That boil took a round from the time I put it on. The water was room temperature, maybe three to four minutes, four minutes. Um, yeah. So it works. Pretty simple. There you go. Thanks for watching.